as for today's update you see this finger is up i'll post picture pictures of my normal finger this one and this one and what it looked like this morning I had what I thought was, you know, when your skin peels, I thought it was just one of those things where the skin is peeling from my cuticle and I cut it off. But it was, it was sore, but then the pain went and there was a bit of blood. And I thought, hmm, and it did feel a bit spongy, spongy now that I think of it. It wasn't, my skin wasn't, my, my finger wasn't flat, but I brushed it off. Did my teaching, I was going to teach the children. So I rushed to teach the children, my middle two. And then I did my injection in the afternoon. Yesterday afternoon, it started hurting. First, it was just, you know, just here, this part of my finger. It started hurting a lot and it didn't go down. And this is me on my AS pain medication. So I've already taken throughout the day about eight pain tablets of varying strengths at different times. And it was throbbing. It was sore. It was sore. I even put a plaster on the front because I thought, okay, maybe when I'm touching things, it's the pressure that's some causing some kind of pain. In the night, it throbbed. <sighs> you could feel it throbbing and like my finger was expanding with each throb of pain. It was horrendous pain. It woke me up out of the trepiline as if I'd not had any trepiline. Trepiline is a pain and sleeping pill. And I had to come, I, I even thought, okay, is the plaster too tight? It was, I couldn't know what to do. Should I cut off the plaster? I took off the plaster. It made no difference to the pain. I put on um, antibiotic, topical antibiotic, so that's an ointment. But I knew that, no, this is inside. It's inside. It's like that. So I took three more heavy duty painkillers i eventually slept and then at five i woke up again and that was it the end of my sleep i emailed i first went online i booked a doctor gp one of those who has seen me the one actually referred me to the urologist and then i emailed my rheumatologist and i said to her i suspect i've got an infection in my finger if that is the case i will go see a gp but i'm telling you because you are my specialist <laughs> And my GP, the other one, didn't even know what Edinburgh was, neither did this one. Um, so I believe you should know. And so that we can also keep track of what's going on with me. Because, and I reminded her that I had to go off the Edinburgh when I had the coronavirus. And now, here I am again. So I asked if I should only come back on the biologic, on the Edinburgh, when the pain is gone and the swelling has reduced. And then I went to the doctor and yes, it is infected. I've got a bacterial infection. It is quite big. I mean, at that point, it was the pain was now down to my elbow. And when he looked at my finger, he was telling me, my patients who come here with this, they're crying. They are literally crying from the pain. It is, he's heard, he, he, he hasn't had it himself, but he's heard that it is one of the worst pains and this is another thing. If you are a chronic pain sufferer, you might have formed a higher pain threshold. And this is bad for us. I think we need to stay quiet. This is my advice. Can we stay quiet for a bit every day if possible? <laughs> I'm not the best one to give to give this advice because I would listen to it. I don't have time. But yeah, let's just sit with our bodies and feel every part like imagine okay my toes lie there and think my toes are my toes okay and i want us to really feel every part of our body and see if it's okay because as i said this was so on wednesday but i've brushed it off as something minor even yesterday i didn't make an appointment yesterday to see the doctor i thought it would be over and even this morning when i made the appointment even at 8 a.m i was scared that by the time i get to the doctor it will be normal again but it wasn't um he had to you know transmit he made a hole in it to squeeze some pass some blood out Whew. wow i've just heard a knock come in
Yes, I am. This is my precious middle children. So, um, yes, oh, I'm meant to, and I'm meant to do that. Squeeze the pus out. It wasn't as bad imagining it, but when I did it, it hurt. It really hurt. And it hurt for ages afterwards. It was just the same. <laughs> 12 out of 10 on the pain scale. I have to keep my hand up, elevated. That's why I'm holding it like this. And after each, I'm meant to soak my hand. He didn't tell me how long, but Google says 20 minutes um, each time. He didn't tell me how many times per day. It ranges between two to four on Google. <laughs> so I'll do three times a day. And each time I'm soaking it in salt water or Dettol water or Savlon water, I mean to squeeze it out. That is the scary part. I didn't want to. The pain was horrific. I was crying. Not that crying. It was more like, oh, you know, that moaning, groaning. It is painful. And that is why I'm here to give that update because I couldn't, I can't type with my left hand. It doesn't work. And yes, I can't type even on my laptop, actually. So this is my update for today. I pray that we will care for each other. And I know somehow, somehow, God will make it, this all make sense. I'm not sure how. I don't know what I'm doing with it. I don't know if I'm, do, if I'm good enough, if I'm doing enough for him. I am a phenomenal mother. Okay, that sounds proud. But I mean in the sense of, I know that I'm a safe space for my children, that they can come and tell me anything. I know that they know they are all loved. They've made it clear that my rules are not too strict. They understand the, the reasoning and the foundation of my rules, of our rules. So in that sense, I'm not an arbitrary mother. I don't, I don't vent any temper on them. So I know in that sense, that's what I mean. I'm a phenomenal mother in that sense. But I wanted to be more. I wanted to be a friend to the friendless. I wanted to be able to go to hospitals. There's a government hospital our church used to visit in the afternoons sometimes where the, the patients had no one. The, some, some have been trans, transferred in from different provinces. Same with another children's hospital also, same thing. Um, because not all government hospitals have all the same equipment. Not every hospital even has an MRI, CT scanner, like the, the minor things that everyone needs. And certain departments don't exist in many hospitals. So yeah, I had wanted to visit the hurting, friendless, so that when they're sitting there, lying there during visiting hour, they're not alone. I'd wanted to do that and I tried to do it with the church. And I've done it before with my husband when we were helping a cancer guy, 21 year old man, young man to die from cancer. I wanted to do that. It is horrible, it is painful, but I wanted to do that. It was lovely to be a support to his sister. Their mother was in a different province at home. She came down to Cape Town with him for cancer's help and turns out it was now terminal. So he had his own little room in the government hospital. It was so bare and drab. And then she phoned, she sent a message and she said, Sister Tandy, can you please help us? They said, my brother's going to die. Um, can you please come and prepare him for that? So I texted my husband and I said, how do we help a 21 year old die? How do you accept that this is it? I don't want to accept it. Every time I breathe, I think of my lungs and where they are, which is where they should not be. I, or I fear about my ribs not opening one day. So I know I, I live on the cusp of the one day knowing that, you know, and I don't even want to be on that cusp, but knowing that, okay, I'm dying now. He had osteosarcoma, cancer of the bone. So we went and we sang, we sang hymns, you know, nothing major. My husband, I told my husband what to say. He found some quotes that matched the message because he was at work. And you know, when you're at work and you're told, we need to go to hospital tonight and go and help this young man die. There's no time to prepare. So we went and I didn't cry, which is a major thing. I, I'm a crier. And when we were leaving, he took my hand, he grabbed my hand from his hospital bed. And 
he wouldn't let go. He couldn't talk anymore because it was now in his jaw. His sister could understand what he was saying. And afterwards, we left that night and the next day he died. And his sister said, oh, he, he was trying to tell me, he was saying that my singing, and it's not perfect, believe me. People, some people praise it, but it's, it's definitely not perfect. But he was saying I sounded like an angel. And that's what I want. I want to be an angel to someone who is suffering. I don't want to need an angel, which is what I do now. But God said, be content. Or Paul said, I've learned in whatever state I am in, therewith to be content. And so I have to be content with my needing an angel. And the fact that I don't have family angel, angels. There's no one in my family to come be my angel. So I will, like I did when I was in labor with my son, I will imagine the angels watching over me, strengthening me, cheering me on, and hoping that through the suffering, throughout the suffering, I will do nothing that will make God look bad. Kind of like Job, where he suffered, but he never cursed God and died like his wife said he should. That's what I want. I want to be a Job. I want to show that my love for God is greater than my need for him to do for me what I want him to do, which is to heal me. And he's done that over the past 40 years since my first conscious memory, which was age three surgery. He can do it for the next 80, but it is hard. So it is hard. Let's not forget that we're suffering. It is hard. But if we're suffering Christians, we can, su we can suffer with grace. He can enable anything, sometimes miraculously, sometimes through sheer grit and practice. And so I pray that the pain is spreading this way. And I'm scared of my neck soaking. I pray that as we enter the Sabbath, today's Friday here in South Africa, Cape Town, that we will be to others what God would want us to be. That we will say the things he would want us to say and that we will suffer with as much grace as he suffered. Never a swear word, never a curse. That is my aim. And I hope that that is your aim too. Did I mention the treatment? Yes, I'm, I'm on oral antibiotics. I'll see what the rheumatologist says. This, I'd wanted to say, sorry, I'd wanted to say, let us pray also, or hope, if you're not a Christian, that this ends, this stop start. Let this get healed before a week is over so that I can continue on this embryo train. We need to know if it is useful, if it's worth it. Otherwise, we need to change track completely and we need to find that out. The sooner, the better. And I need to know what, when the doctor will decide how many infections do I need before the doctor decides, okay, embryo is the problem. It's giving you too many chances to get sick. So let's try something else. And do the other biologics work differently? Or would they still allow the same thing? So if I fail this biologic because of the multiple infections, does that mean I automatically fail all biologics and that's it? So I, there's a lot to think about here and it will get worse. That's the thing. I know it will get worse and I know it's worse for other people. And I hope that the grace I've had over the past 40 years will carry me through to the rest of it. But I want answers. I really do want answers. I want to know that we're on, we're getting somewhere. It's a lot of money to waste. And for those of you also, that's the other thing. People like to say, oh, well, at least you know now what's wrong. But we took a lot of money to get here. We paid a lot for those tests. And I wish we could think about that when we speak to people. Think about the financial, emotional, physical burdens their sicknesses have brought on, brought on them and their families. 
and bear those burdens and fulfill God's love. Commandment to love each other, to be one. We can't be one if we don't try to get into each other's worlds. And I appreciate those who do try and get into my world. I really do. Thank you very much.